welcome to No Enemies Here, the news where you don't get the blues. <clears throat> so, everything's good. At Amazon, everything's good. That's all you gotta know. The guy got suspended. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? Don't be belligerent, especially if you're a manager at Amazon who pride themselves in people. What else? Look, I got a news. News. I got uh, some 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 game news here from Flying Pig Games or Tiny Battle Publishing. Uh, don't forget, Scream, Aim, Fire, a game designed by J. Kirkpatrick and by the artist is Ilya Kudryashov. This Scream, Aim, Fire is the Pacific version and it's a Tiny Battle Publishing tiny game. Big battles. You know what I'm saying? Their other Scream, Aim, Fire was Western, probably Eastern Front. I didn't dive into it yet. But anyways, you know what I'm saying, right? And also, Mark Walker's of Flying Pig Games fame, The Long Road, World War III, with a twist. This is his weird War III type thing, you know? I think it's cool. I'm actually playing Twilight 2000 right now with, with Dratus, my partner, and the chief of Bonding with Board Games. And... and um, I don't know, it's starting to get a bit scary. Not scary in the sense that, you know, there's werewolves and, and, and nuked bears, but there are nuked bears, because this is a post-apocalyptic game. It's that. I gotta be careful. I can't be all gung-ho, or gung-ho, on um, charging a machine gun nest, because if I die, I die. There ain't no respawning. It's over. I'm dead. So I'm gonna... I'm going to level up because I've got enough points to level up. Though, I can level up something fierce if I wait. But uh, things are a bit uh, sketchy sometimes. But anyways, you know. Going back to Flying Pig Games and Herman Latman's A Most Fearful Sacrifice, man. The Three Days of Gettysburg. And it's happening the uh, games are going to be shipped soon because the container is actually in the States. New York port or something like that, Mark said. And um, the map is by the late great map artist, uh, Rick Barber. And um, I'm telling you, I hate to say it to Herman that the first reason why I bought the game was Rick Barber and a very, very close 1.2 uh, reason, not second reason, 1.2, so Herman, or 1.1 I should say, is, is a Herman, for God's sake. And uh, obviously the second reason is because uh, Flying Pig Games make awesome, awesome components. Awesome, 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 awesome. Nothing can be said about their components ever, ever. We have Ricardo with us today and Voinex back. I didn't get anything from Kilroy. Uh, he wanted to do a live stream, test it out. I couldn't get in, I don't know, the phone rang and I completely forgot about it. That's basically the reason. And, uh, you know, I was talking with, um, with Artie on everything you want to know about war games, but we're afraid to ask. This time it was at my house, the Duchess Tavern, and I wanted to play a um, a solitaire game. I wanted to play. Uh, I didn't play it there. It's called Stalingrad Solitaire. Point to point. Uh, Gary Graber is the designer, and uh, it was published by uh, CTP. Oh my God, I forget. Canvas Temple, yeah, Canvas Temple Publishing. I, I got it right there in iShot. And, um, I don't know, look. I'll try to set it up. I'm not very good with all this stuff. I set it up, I leave it there, you know, the phone rings, and then where, there it is. I'll let you know how it goes. And I, I'm due for an interview, because I, on the other channel I interviewed the uh, Master Alchemist Blender Jeremy Reeves, and... 
this incredible artist who makes I guess you could call them pipes but I ain't gonna smoke these pipes man check them out Eldritch Eldritch pipes and it's um, a man called Chris he's the artist he really is truly evilly awesome it's 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 just unbelievable artwork that this guy does he has standard type of colors and um, shapes he likes and um, check it out man Eldritch pipes and if you, you comment tell Dan from the Fokker Circus sent you huh? all right also check out Noble Knights new living catalog that I created number two there's some different games there you should check out their website because they have everything you want and if it's not there they're gonna get it and if it's not there it was plus their shipping look shipping is is really bad these days so you want to save some money go to noble knight and also you get 10 percent by doing this by 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 uh, telling him the code, you know, what I'm trying to say by putting in the code no enemies here show, N E H show, N E H show, and you get 10% extra. All right, down the douche sent you. Have a good show, man. This is Ricardo Mazzini, and is there this time the greatest day in history and games is February 10, 1763. The day when the greatest military confrontation in North America until then finally ended. The last day of the French Indian War. This confrontation began in 1754 when growing tensions between French and British colonists led to a dramatic escalation in the Ohio Valley, which famously involved a young Virginia militia officer by the name of George Washington. Also, what would be later known as the French and Indian War should be considered an offspring of a much greater conflict in Europe, the Seven Years' War, which saw Britain allied with Prussia, the enemy of France. Under these conditions, the war rapidly switched from a small local confrontation to a continental scale, involving different invasions of the poorly populated French dominions by much more numerous and organized British forces. What the French lacked in professional soldiers, however, was more than compensated by the bravery and skill of the colonists, a series of powerful forts along the border, and most of all, a stable alliance with many major native nations. These factors combined, great, and combined greatly strengthened French defensive capabilities. Many times, great and well-equipped contingents of British regular troops and colonial militia were repulsed by smaller French and Indian forces, showing the greater familiarity with the difficult wilderness terrain and very effective guerrilla tactics. 
and in some cases, daring counterattacks even led to the fall of British held fortifications. But the war in Europe continued, and British determination grew. A new government led by William Pitt focused resources and troops on the American theater, while the French monarchy was more and more pressed by the ongoing conflict with Prussia. In 1758, the strategic position of Louisbourg fell, and in 1759, General Wolfe conceived and led daring plan to capture the key city of Quebec. Although in the final battle, both Wolfe and the wet French commander Montcalm lay dead on the field, the British triumph came as a devastating blow to France that could not afford to finance any longer such a hopeless struggle in the far-off portion of its dominions. Even if the conflict probably dragged on for some years, the final outcome was now decided. With the 1763 Treaty of Paris, France renounced to Canada and the most part of its possessions on the American mainland, while retaining the much more lucrative sugar-producing sugar colonies in the Caribbean. French philosopher Voltaire famously said that the King of France had just loved lost a few acres of snow, and actually the British had now to cope with the burden of a great war debt. The fairly rebellious colonial population, quite intolerant of the new taxes imposed to pay off such a debt. The French and Indian War is a great turning point of history, with monumental consequences, not limited to the military field. Great numbers of French colonists were deported from their lands, uh, from their lands by the British, even changing their names from Acadion to Cadion to Cajun. Native populations suffered even more from repressive policies by British governors, while their ancestral territories were now open to exploitation by the colonial farmers and traders. And as we all know, George Washington will be soon involved in another war. The game I have chosen to depict all this is bayonets and tomahawks. While the classic CDG by Paul Korunke Wilderness War gives us a multidimensional treatment, of the war with a political monetary approach, BNT focuses more on the kinetic level made by military maneuvers and battles. The game effectively depicts through co command cut the difficulties of coordinating large formations of troops in such a great area with roads and, dif and a difficult terrain made of dense forests, treacherous rivers, and frozen lakes. Also, reinforcements from Europe are never granted and regularly insufficient from, from forcing, for example, the French player to rely more and more on irregular warfare waged by not totally controllable native allies. The isolated outposts outside a few larger cities are vulnerable to raiding, the larger British invasion forces proceed at an agonizing pace, while suitable routes are built to allow their powerful artillery to advance with them. Ambushes happen everywhere, forts must be taken through long sieges, and while a player is forcing on one area of the map, Another portion of the seemingly undefendable border might be subjected to a surprise counterattack. I have to say that I really like this game. Battles are quickly resolved by the use of special dice, more scenarios are provided for each year of the conflict, asymmetries in resources and leadership abound, supported by a very deep historical research up to the native names of the uncolonized territories. So, yes, even if you, like me, own and like Wilderness War, you will find a different but equally valid simulation of these conflicts in Bagnets and Tomahawks. So, that's it for this time, see you on the next Battlefield, ciao!
why did McClellan attack uh, the peninsula? He attacked. I thought he never attacked. Artie of Ardwolf Slayer is slacking off with only two videos this week. And his counter-clipping Wargaming Dream Projects. Also, on everything you want to know about Wargames, but we're afraid to ask, we talk about, and actually stayed on topic, we talked about, God, I forgot, Wargame Maps. That's what we talked about. Yes, sir, Bob. We had like 120 people watching this, man. It's getting big. Dad versus Son moves on with his modern... Battle tank, the advanced rules situation, I should say, scenario one. Um, T4 and T5, I forget what T is. I don't know what, what's my, what my problem is. And modern, modern battle tank, scenario two, advanced rules, and T1, T2. God, my brains. This week, in the war room, ID Jester, Tony's board life, and rough swordsman wargamer, say goodbye to their dear friend and they hope to honor his memory rest in peace Chris Ridley Mark Felton this week two videos the Les Heinkel Britain's only remaining World War II German plane and the death of that scumbag Himmler episode 4 Himmler's missing Patrick's tactics and tutorials three videos commanding colors ancients 317 Ruspina, also Great Battles of the American Civil War Multiplayer, Long Roads to Gettysburg. And here come the Rebels, scenario number three in Roads to Gettysburg 2. Rough Swords and Wargamer with his Rough and Blue Livestream GMT's Red Storm. Again, part four. This is the part four playthrough, live I should say, scenario RS4. Op uh, opening rounds. Twees fires sparrows at my aircraft, but I got a chance to return the favor with my AAA. AAA? Anti aircraft artillery? Ah. On Seek Out and Play, he goes Japanese today with Command and Colors Samurai Battles. An introduction. This is a short video that introduces Command and Color uh, and Color as Colors. Samurai Battles by GMT. So he covers the basics of the game, the era the battle takes place, and turn sequence. Atlantic Storm, Admiral's Edition. This is a solo playthrough of the Axis side, a game published by Lock and Loot. Publishing on World War II Solitaire Board Game Channel this week for your perusal. Indy Nidell and the fabulous channel World War II day by day. Total war coming to Germany. Also, time to fire Rommel. Ah, what an idiot move. And Stalingrad Endgame. January 31st, 1943. On World War II day by day. Morty Roll plays World War II miniatures, board games, and media. He's on a tear. He shows us his game drawer. Gotta be careful. Then, he thanks an eccentric man. Also, another video on Chain of Command, Jean Bleu, scenario number four, and Brevity, North Africa, SCS, game by MMP, his first attempt. And he gives us quick thoughts after teaching Blitzkrieg Commander. And his first solo attempt, attempt at MMP's Battalion Combat Series Last Blitzkrieg. Man, I haven't seen USA, USA Patriot 4163, and he's back with a shellacking's worth of videos on Rockroy, turn one Spanish player, and the 30 Years War quad game, which is the same game, obviously. So the Rockroy Spanish player, turn one, two, three, four, five, and six, with a wrap. Gimpy of the Gimpy Gamer does a point blank boot camp number 38 fire action and bolt action review through part four and Panzerkampf clash of tanks a preview on the Gimpy Gamer. The players aid this week 
review Captain C from Legion War Games, also an unboxing of Moscow 41 from Vento Nuovo, and reviews Aliens. Anor an an another glorious day in the core. This week on the Operations Room, with the fall of France to Germany in 1940, the Allies cannot let the French battleship at Mer el Kabir fall into German hands. The Royal Navy sends a powerful force to the port with an ultimatum. Join us, sink your ships, or we'll blast them out of the skies. This week, an animated video on the operations room. Three videos out on the Discriminating Gamer this week. Dr. Cody takes a look at his top 10 GMT games. Also, looks at Worthington Publishing's Bismarck Solitaire and answers your questions live. The Board Game Chronicles takes a look at a huge game by Greg, or I should say Craig, the Sink, Conquest, and Consequence, a game published by GMT. The legend that is Stuka Joe at BayotaCon, a chat with the boss of BayotaCon, Sergio Alama. The Professor Ricardo Mazzini, two videos, Scipio News, number 10, Di Guerre e Battaglie, Fuori e Dentro, dot, dot, dot. Also, he looks at Lock and Load Tacticals, Heroes of Normandy, World War II, that is, obviously. This week on My Own Worst Enemy, Gameplay, Cruel Necessity, The English Civil Wars, 1640 to 1653. If I'm not mistaken, this is a victory point game. The defunct now victory point game. Mo takes a look at MacArthur's War, the Korean War and Beyond from Micro Design Group Preview, a game designed by Kerry Anderson. Kyle Seeley wraps up and gives us his thoughts of a game called Crusade and Revolution on the Spanish Civil War, 1836 to 1839, a game designed by David Gomez Reloso. On Kings and Generals this week, six videos, why and how feudalism declined in Europe. Also, Witcher King's inspiration, and First Crusade, Rise of Alexios Komenos, and the Battle of Novara, and Marignano, the Italian Wars. Battle of Mascara Strait, Pacific War number 11. And this is animated. And why didn't Chingans invade, or Chingis invade India in Mongol history? Hello everyone, this is Michel Leviathan Sorbet from the Polish YouTube channel Wojennik TV. After a brief break, I'm back with my weekly roundups. Due to health issues, I wasn't able to provide any new videos to Dan during the, during the past weeks, but I hope that now I will be continuously able to provide them and to give you a very brief overview of what was published on my channel during the last seven days. So, last Sunday, I released a playthrough, a playthrough of one of my favorite non-war games, which is a playthrough of Baseball Highlights 2045. This is a card game, a card game obviously about baseball. Now, to be sincere, before discovering this game a few years back, I absolutely knew almost nothing about baseball. After playing this game, it was such a blast that I started to look around for a baseball bat and for a baseball ball. So this is a game which absolutely bought me and I enjoy it every time I play it. I decided to share this passion with my viewers and I released a playthrough of a solo game. On Tuesday, I released my video in English and this was a war game review, a review of the solo mode of Down in Flames Locked On from Dan Verson Games. I have already presented this game both during a playthrough, an unboxing, a Polish review, and an English review of the standard mo mode. Now this was the review of the solo mode because this game is a game with a dedicated solo mode with additional solo rules with some solo scenarios. And it is extremely good in terms of solitaire play. So if you're interested in taking a look how this game works in the solo mode, you can take a look at this video. On Wednesday, the Polish unboxing, and this was the unboxing of Sorcerer City by Druid City Games. Again, a non-war game, but an interesting title, a tile-placing game, 
in which we'll be creating a mystical, a magical city, but a city in which also monsters will try to interfere with our construction. Finally, on Friday, the Polish review, and this time I decided to revisit Stalingrad and I released the review of Scope Stalingrad. This was a game, this is a game released by Draco Ideas. Uh, this is a small scale, scale game, a game which can be played easily under 20 minutes. So in terms of wargaming, this is something that is quite interesting. A game in which both sides will take control of forces, including sharpshooters, and our main objective will be to locate and to kill enemy snipers. So if you're interested also in taking a look at this game, the review is on my channel, but an English version of this review will also be soon published. So that's it from me. I wish you a terrific weekend, have a great gaming, and hopefully see you next time. Kilroy was here is slacking off with only four videos this week. The first video, he goes off the shelf on Avalon Hill versus SPI. <laughs> For me, it would be Avalon Hill. Right? Also, Hugo Mont, Kino Waterloo, 18th of June, 1815, and Balaclava. Breaking the Siege, the 25th of October, 1854. And he looks at Imperial Tide, a game by published by Compass Games on The Great War, 1914 to 1918. Julius Fairfax has a video out on successors. I'm assuming these are three different editions. Well, looky that. And Joel Toppin takes a look at Freddy Fred Serval's Red Flag over Paris, available right now on GMT. JK Wargames this week has a video on Alien, the fate of the Nostromo. This is a review. Also, also nothing. That's what I'm saying. I thought I played this game, but I didn't. I played the legendary Alien, which is incredibly difficult. Till you start figuring out how it goes. Then... It's just a matter of shuffling the cards he got. A winner of Grognard of the Year years ago, Jim Ozarski, the real historical Grognard. Probe into Fontenay for Chain of Command and also the Battle of Isandalbuana for the men who would be dot dot dot. I'm going to say king, but it's the men, it's not the man. Freddy Fred Serval of Omo Ludens talks about his top five underrated war games, but he's not alone. He's with Kai Jensen, also the gentleman of The Player's Aid and Corey G. Freddy, the philosopher that is Hexes and Soldiers. Jason Cruz, AJ Toynbee of Hexes and Soldiers. Two videos, Epic Battle, Stoof, Stuff, he says, but it looks like Stuff. Stuff would be one F. Stuff is two Fs. Get it right, X. Also, Epic Battles Waterloo's first progress report. Federazione Italiana Wargame is proud to present from 10th to 12th, June 2022. I'm assuming they are having a con in Italy, of which... I'm sure everybody would love to be. Eat good food, play good games, eat, I eat, drink good wine, amongst other things. Dave of Dave's Gaming Cave, four videos. Go Green Cup Smoothie Challenge. Eh, I ain't going green. Also, a new game of which I have just received from Compass Games called Combat Volume 2, where he tells us about overrun scenarios one, two, three, and four. This ain't your luckiest day in nap. Your chopper was shot down, the pilot is dead, your squad is full of marines fresh out of boot camp, and base camp is a long way from here. VC is sure to swarm all over you any second now. Get a move on, Marine. Check your gear. Don't leave anything behind for the enemy. There's someone up ahead. VC? You can't tell from here. Options? Take him out. Sneak up on him or... Wait, there's no time. 
you order a Marine to take a shot. It was one of yours. You shot the pilot from the second chopper. The Marines all messed up. And now you've got to carry the wounded pilot with you, slowing you down even more. There's a cluster of shacks, overgrown with jungle weed. It could be a VC camp. But no one's around. It's either a great chance to scoop up some intel or fall into a deadly trap. There was someone here recently. But no one's inside now. And you find something useful. Not a waste of time, then. You push on through the jungle, but the VC's never far behind. The gorillas hit you with everything they've got. You and your Marines hit the dirt. Your guys are green as grass, but they're all you've got. You regain the initiative. The enemy's in trouble now. Break, break, break. Bulldog 7, this is Blue 1. Troops in contact. Coordinates to follow. Your point man is hit hard, but the fight's over. The remaining VC retreat into the woods. You gather your men and search the dead VC for any useful intel and gear. The base ain't far, but God, you're tired. Some of your men look exhausted. And who knows what else lurks in this green hell. How will you fare in the depths of the Vietnamese jungle against a deadly enemy that can be anywhere? Will you survive, Nam, or will you succumb to purple haze? Find out. Pledge now. And the gents at Compass Games are doing a Compass Games live episode 70 with Sean Krantz. Hiya, Combat. Combat Board Games takes a look at Worthington Publishing solo book game called Waterloo Solitaire. Castle Archon continues with his designer versus designer, designer I should say, I'm fumbling something fierce today, the final match of Julius Caesar. Calendale begins a Vive l'Empereur seri series, La Bataille d'Anno, October 30th to 31st, 1813. As I said before, Bonding with board games and Evil Twilight 2000 Season 1 Episode 4, Kelly's Heroes, and his vlog of RPG Twilight 2000 and what else he's doing. Plus, we're on Twilight 2000 Episode number 8. And number eight. Poland has not yet dot dot dot. Kevin of the Big Board on Big Board Gaming. Third winner scenario continues. Number 3, also... A Golden Geek Edition upgrade look inside of a game designed by, well, it looks like a Phalanx game, but that's Hannibal. On 6 Actual, a lock and load publishing game called Days of Heroes. I have this game. No hexes in this game. Square hexes. Well, there are hexes, but they're square. They're not hexes. They're squares. On three minute board game, Arkham Horror, the card game in about three minutes. Also, season five launch video and giveaway. Wars of the World this week. What was the post war career of the Messerschmitt? Also, Joseph Mengele, the Auschwitz Angel of Death. <laughs>
Horror Gamer, part one of his playthrough of Eisenhut, designed by Michael Claiborne. Yeah, I I got that title, I tell ya. On memoirs of World War II, veteran World War II soldiers attempts to save Sailor from Pearl Harbor wreckage. Wreckage. This is Navy veteran Joseph Richard recalls the attack on Pearl Harbor, his attempts to rescue trapped sailors in the aftermath, and the heartbreaking realization that he may not be able to save them all. The artist that is Matt White and also a game designer, let us not forget Normandy 44 review from GMT, a game designed by Mark Simonich. I'm trying to get Mark on for an interview. He's a tough cookie. Legendary Tactics this week. Gaming with Jack. Also, Twilight Struggle Strategy. How do you play the check card? And Horrified Board Game Reboxing Unboxing. Also, another Twilight Struggle Strategy. How do you play the Our Man in Tehran card? And cards. Soviet Avro decks are not very good. In his opinion. And the Legendary Lowdown. Board Game News. Deep Rock Galactic. Kickstarter. Hex to Hex, Stonewall in the Valley, Great Campaigns of the American Civil War, a game published in 1995 by the Avalon Hill Game Company. This is Volume 4, Cross Keys and Port Republics. Republic, I should say. This week on Counterproductive Games, he takes a first look at Charge, Eagle Ri Eagles Rising, Napoleonic Era, first look, also revisiting urban operations and taking a drive down the long road from Mark Walker and Flying Pig Games. And why he bought South China Seas from Compass Games. Also an unboxing of Digging Into the Captain Sea Beyond and Unboxing. Sean Morin of Gaming with the Colonel gives us an overview and playthrough of Bobby Lee by Columbia Games. Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to the Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This week we did one review, a first look video, and an episode of War Game Chat. The review we did was Redline Korea from Game Fix Magazine. It's a simulation of a hypothetical modern war between North Korea and the UN. The rules are okay and it's fun to play, however the rule book needs some work. We did a first look at Legion Wargame's Heart of Darkness, an adventure game of Af African exploration. It looks like it is meant to appeal to Avalon Hill's Source of the Nile fans. The game looks interesting, but I've been told it's a long game. On Wargame Chat episode number 35, we talked about three Vietnam War books. They were Thud Ridge, Soldier, and Going Downtown. Thud Ridge and Going Downtown are the books you want to read if you're interested in the F-105. Soldier is a book about a highly decorated colonel who fought in Korea in the Vietnam War. Thanks for watching and have a good evening.
another week, another show. I hope you guys still, guys and girls. When I say guys, I'm it's, it's everything, guys and girls. What can I tell you? I hope you guys still enjoy these news. Uh, some fun stuff I try to throw in, you know, keep it different. Um, like I said, if anybody has any more websites for me to peruse, write them down in there in the comments and it's much appreciated I check them all out I read every single comment and I appreciate them good or bad um please like subscribe and support this channel it helps and you know what lots of snow here I hope where you are it's just as nice as nice is have a great weekend